Hello, welcome to Pregame Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 76 of ASP.NET video series. In part 73 of this video series, we have discussed about logging exceptions to the Windows Event Viewer and in part 75, logging exceptions to a database table. In this session, we'll discuss about customizing ASP.NET exception logging, meaning the user should be able to change a setting within web.config file and depending on that setting, the exception should either be logged to the Windows Event Viewer or to a database table or to even both. Let's see how to do that with an example. In fact, we'll be using the same example that we used to discuss exception uh, handling within the previous sessions of this video series. So, I have this webform1.aspx on this. I have a grid view control. And on the page load, this um, we, are, we are trying to read the XML data from countries.xml file, but we don't have countries.xml file. So obviously when this page loads up, we get a file not found exception. And since we are not handling that exception at the page level, it gets propagated till the application level. And at the application level in global.asax file, we have application underscore error event handler. And here we are retrieving the exception and then if the exception is not null, meaning if the exception has occurred, we are logging that exception using this logger class. Again, this logger class is the same class that we have been using in the previous sessions of this video series. And this logger class is present in this logger.cs file. And if you look at that file, it has got logger class and a log method. That's a static method. And this method takes this exception object as an input parameter. and and then the log method is actually retrieving the exception type, exception message, and a stack trace. And it does it for all the inner exceptions as well. And then finally, what we are doing here, we are logging you know, that exception to a database table. That's what we have discussed in the previous session. Okay. Now, what we are going to do here is we are going to refactor this code a little. Okay, so I'm going to take this bit of code, this ADO.NET code, which actually takes the exception message. Look at that. It's taking whatever exception message that we have in this SB exception message string builder object and passing that, you know, to this ADO.NET code, which logs that message to a database table. So I'm going to take this ADO.NET code and then put it inside its own method. I'm going to create a private method for that. So private and it's going to be a static method. Uh, it's not going to return anything. So private void. And I'm going to call this log to DB. And let's make it static method. And then I'm I'm placing that ADO.NET code within this method. And if you look at this, this method, I mean, this piece of code requires a string to be passed in, which will then be logged to a database table. So I'm going to pass that in as a parameter. So string log. And then we will use that as the parameter, SQL parameter. OK, cool. So we have that. This method is going to log you know, the exception to a database. So we will call that method within you know, log method. And I made this private, this method private because I'm going to use this method only within the logger class. I'm not going to make it available outside of the logger class. Now this logger class, log to db method, expects a log to be passed in. And what is that log? That is nothing but this string builder object. So we are going to pass that to this method and convert that to string. OK. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to also log to event viewer. So to do that, in part 73, we have seen how to log exceptions to the Windows event viewer. So I'm going to take code, you know, the same code that we used in that part, and I'm going to put that in its own method. OK, so let's copy the name here. And it's going to be another private method. And this time, I'm going to call this log to event viewer. OK, and let's take that code, which logs the string to the event viewer, the exception to the event viewer. So basically, this is, again, the same code that we have used in the previous session. It checks if the event source exists. If it exists, then it creates an instance of the event log. And then finally, writes uh, the message to the event log. 
okay so we have that log which is coming in as a parameter so now if you want to log to the event viewer I can simply say log to event viewer and it expects the log to be passed in as string which we have in SP the string builder object so we are passing that in to this method now if you look at this as it stands you know it's the same log method but then we just added these two private methods one method logs the exception to the event viewer the other method logs the exception to the database and we are calling those methods within this log method okay so obviously now when we run this we get an exception first let's open up the event viewer and then let's go to the database table if you look at the database table uh, tbl log it doesn't have any exception messages there and if I come to the Windows event viewer and if we go into application and service logs and if we go to Prajim tag there are some previous exceptions so let's go ahead and clear them so click clear log clear so we don't have any exceptions here now let's run this application as it stands so now when I run this so we are handling the unhandled exception within global.asx file in application underscore error that's going to handle that log it to both the database table and the windows event viewer and redirects the user to errors.aspx page that's what is happening here and we are using server.transfer so the url doesn't get updated so we are redirected to server.transfer now let's go ahead and check the event viewer first so let me click refresh and look at that okay I have the exception there let's go and check the database table I have the exception here as well but then we want this to be customizable or configurable now we are logging the exceptions both to the Windows event viewer and to a database table but then I want this to be configurable within the application meaning within web.config file there should be some setting which the user changes and depending on that setting we want to either log it to Windows event viewer or to a database table or to even both and how do we do that simply go to web.config file and within web.config file I'm going to add another section here and I'm going to call that as app setting setting uh, section application settings basically and then here I can have set of keys so I'm going to add a key I'm going to specify the value for that key as maybe log provider so what's the log provider is it event viewer or is it the database table okay and then that's the key and the value is going to be either database so if I say database here within web.config file then the exception should be only logged to database but on the other hand if I say event viewer it should be logged only to event viewer if I say both only then the exception should be logged to both okay so this value should be either database event viewer or both and depending on that setting the logger should log either to a database table to the event viewer or both okay and to do that it's a very simple code all you have to do is within this logger class okay within the log method we read that you know key value from web.config file so the important thing is how do we read that from web.config file to read anything from web.config file we can make use of configuration manager class okay so let's go to the logger class so here I'm gonna get that string maybe let's call it log provider and how do I read the value of that key I'm going to use configuration manager class dot now app settings you have a property called app settings and then what is the name of your key here the name of your key is log provider so I'm gonna take that and then pass that to this app settings that's it that's gonna return the value of uh, that key log provider and what we tell here if log provider I'm converting it to lawyer so that if if we have a mixed case within web.config file you know we can match it correctly so to lawyer is equal to if it's a database then what do we want to do we want to log only to database so I'm gonna copy that and put it there so only log to DB and then on the other hand else if it's going to be event viewer if it's going to be event viewer then we want to log only to event viewer and we have a method which can do that 
So I'm, I'm going to put that method there. And finally, if it's both, then I want to log both to the database and to the event viewer. So I'm going to put log to DB and log to event viewer. That's it. That's the simple customization. So now it's configurable. And if you look at what we have in web.config at the moment, we have database. So it's going to log only to the database, but not to the event viewer. So we have one entry within the database. And within event viewer, I have one entry. But since we have configured it now to log it only to database, when we run this code, when we run this application, it should only log to database and not to the event viewer. And let's see if, it, if, if that's what it does. So when it loads up, you know, let's execute that. So I have the exception written. But then if we go to the event viewer, I refresh this. Look at that. I don't have it there. On the other hand, if I change the web.config settings maybe to event viewer, and you run this, at this time, it should only log the exception to event viewer and not to the database. So it's logged in the event viewer. And in the database, it should only be two and not three. But on the other hand, if you set it to both, it will get logged both to the uh, event viewer and to the database table. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.